Well, this is Sam in Wyoming. Welcome to my shop once again. A week or so ago, my wife Cheryl and I came back from the Utah Wood Turning Symposium, and we're all inspired to do a little coloring today, and I thought I would take this uh, little pot here and do a little coloring. I started out by bleaching this, and I'll show you the, uh, the kind of bleach I use. It's a two-part solution. Cheryl often goes to different wood turning symposiums with me and she goes to different uh, demonstrations and one of them kind of inspired her to actually do something out in the shop. So why don't you show them what you did and, and talk about your uh, teacher that uh, you, you saw who, who was the demonstrator? Okay, so I saw um, his name was Raleigh Lockhart and yeah, I just got kind of inspired. Normally I'll just sit and just, you know, watch, but this actually looked like something I might be interested in doing. So um, he, he creates a story by finding leaves in different places that he goes. And this was a leaf that he did his demonstration on. But today's topic is going to be uh, coloring this, and I start coloring these from the inside. But before I do, here's today's shout out. Yuval Lahav in Italy. And I think he lives in maybe Rome. But anyway, Yuval sent me one of his stickers, and uh, he's a YouTuber also. And uh, anyway, thank you very much, Yuval, for sending that to me. Now, the first thing I'm going to do and I often dribble down the opening of these pots and I don't want this to look like uh, a paint can with drips down the, the opening there. I'm going to take some painter's tape and I'm going to just uh, kind of mask that around there in case I get some drips. It won't affect that. So uh, let me do that off camera and we'll get back to you. Okay, I'm ready to put some color into this little hollow form, it's box elder, and again I bleached it a couple times. I got this tip from Chris Pitlick that uh, to get a really nice vibrant color it's good to uh, bleach that and it's a, about as white as it's going to get. So I'm going to take one of these spirit stains and I'm going to start with that. Um, these are chestnut spirit stains and I think you could probably get those at uh, craft supplies and woodcraft and places like that. I've mixed up a little bit of the three primary colors in these little mason jars. I thought this would be a really good example because it's such a nice um, white piece at this time. So I'm going to take one of my pipettes This is just like an eyedropper. And I'm going to just take some of this white. Now the nice thing about this uh, chestnut spirit stain is you can get it in white. And a lot of times you can't get a stain or a dye in white. So you can get these. I'll, I'll uh, put a link up to where you can get these little pipettes. I think I got them from Stuart McDonald. So I'm going to just take a little bit of white. And what I want to do is make this blue a little bit more like turquoise. And it's a good idea to keep these pipettes separate so they're kind of, you know, not mixed up with something else. Mix it up a little bit. I think I need some more white in there. that up a little bit more and I'm not sure how much I'm going to need eventually for for this um, I think I'm getting closer all right now let's move these out of the way I think I'm ready now 
Now what I'm going to do is put one color in this, and if you ever do this particular procedure, it's a good idea to put one color on this and then let it sit and dry. Otherwise, if I put another color on top of this, those two colors will blend together. And you can blend color just like I did here when it's still wet. You can do it later on by putting one color on that and then adding something to it and hopefully it won't bleed together too much. It probably will, but um, I'm gonna just put one color in here and let that dry. So I'm gonna take the same pipette. I just let my wife hold this and I've got that mask off so I don't dribble down the, the pot. And this is helpful to have somebody hold this. Um, okay, let's, let's hold this more like, like that to begin with. What I like to do is just go right on the inside and, and let that dribble down on the inside of that. And what that'll do is it'll wick through. And it'll come out on the outside. All right, now I'm gonna have Cheryl just rotate that. Now you can, look at this, you can already see it. Let me show my wife here, you see that? Oh, mm -hmm. It's already coming through and, and even though there's masking tape there, I can also see it coming in right there. So this is a fairly thin piece. It's probably um, oh, less than a quarter of an inch. Now one thing I also did in preparation for this is I I had some little bark inclusions, and right here you can see a knot. <clears throat> and I went through there and sealed those with CA glue. Because otherwise I'm gonna get drips coming, coming through there. All right. Now that's not quite as light as I like it, but I think it's um, it's okay. It's pretty color. One, one of my rules um, is not to just use one of the primary colors. Don't use blue, red, or yellow, but mix a little bit of something in there and you'll get a color that's original. And actually we were in what AAW Symposium Jack Vesseray was the demonstrator and he mentioned that technique and I'm not sure if Cheryl remembers that. Go ahead and just kind of, I'm getting a puddle of color in there so just kind of rotate that. There you go and it's coming coming through right here. Ordinarily this wicks through where there's short grain but since this is more of a burl I could get that color coming through just about any place. That's cool. Okay, now let's let's do this once again, and I'm going to run out of color here. I'm going to mix this up again, and I'm going to maybe try to get a little bit different color than what I started with. So I need some white, and I'm going to put a little bit more white in this, and and really make it lighter. There, and we'll just see if we can get a additional color by doing that. And I'm going to try to put it more. It won't come through this side. Well, it may not. And like I always say, you can't trust wood. I just hold it there just one second. Let me get that along the side on the inside. <coughs> Go ahead and turn it a little bit. Now there's nothing difficult about this. There really isn't. Probably the most difficult thing is to get the wood a little bit thinner to begin with. And that's more of a turning issue than what I'm doing right now. And if you can see inside, sometimes you get a little bit of a puddle. I'm putting quite a bit of uh, liquid in there, so. Okay. So far I like what, what's happening on the outside. I'm getting quite a bit through there. Now let's, put, we'll put the rest of this in there, tip this a little bit more like that. 
Okay. Let me just squirt that more down. Okay, turn it. This is much easier with a helper. All right. Now, just move it all around because I've got a little bit of a puddle in there. And something else that'll happen is that will continue to wick through to the outside. And I'll let that sit till tomorrow and we'll continue the video. I'm not sure if my lovely helper will be around, but uh, who knows? So, let me shut the camera off and let that sit. What do you think? Cool. Yeah. It's very cool. Now, what color should I use next? I'm not sure. There's a little red. Okay, it's time to put another color into my uh, colored pot here. I'm gonna put a little bit of blue in here. And I'm gonna put some more red in this one little mason jar. Then I'm gonna do some mixing on these. Okay. Okay, now it's a good idea to do a little bit of uh, experimentation on this, so I'm going to just put a little dab of that on this block of wood. Okay, that's, um, that's not too bad. Now, I'm going to do one more thing. I'm going to get some denatured alcohol and I'm going to thin this down. I just happen to have a little jar of denatured alcohol, so I'm going to put a little bit of that in there. And we'll try this again. I don't want this too dark, because this can really turn uh, almost black when you get it in there. Okay, so that's, that's a little bit lighter than that, and I'm okay with that. Let's... Let's go ahead and we'll do a little bit more staining on this little pot. So apparently I've lost my assistant this morning. I'm not sure where she's at, but that's what we have so far. And I apologize for the masking tape, but so far that's uh, doing a good job of keeping this clean on the outside. I want any of the color to come through from the inside. I'm going to really try to put that on the, the very inside of that opening. And Cheryl and I talked about whether I should have a finial on this. And I'm kind of thinking, and she agreed that maybe I wouldn't or I shouldn't have a finial on that. We'll just uh, leave it like it is. And I don't often do that, but uh, I'm going to Kansas City and I want to take this piece and I'm, I'm planning right now on making it shiny. And uh, I have less than a month, or right at a month. Now I'm going to take a look at this and you can see right, right here I'm getting a little bit of that purple coming through. Yeah. So I'm going to keep putting that in there and I'm, I'll probably start putting it down here a little bit farther. I just don't want that to get uh, to the point of puddling on the inside of my pot. You put too much liquid in here, you can uh, crack your vessel. And I've had that happen a number of times. It just opens up. 
and usually when it dries it also will go back down and that crack or that split will will close up so if that happens don't freak out too much um, so far I'm really liking this and I'm going to just squirt a bunch down in that largest diameter on the inside now I started this yesterday I started with the blue yesterday so this is my second color and it's a good idea to be patient with this and maybe do a color a day trying to find some areas that hasn't come through yet so I'll probably put this in here a little bit more and simply wait another day take a look at it and uh, see what I've got and we'll go from there I'm, I'm starting to get the inside of this vessel fairly wet I can I can see it pooling in there so I'm going to stop right here and I'm going to just rotate this and, uh, it's a good idea to take a paper towel and just put that on the opening in case some comes back at me I don't want that dripping boy you can see that really coming through and this is crazy if you've never done this it's a uh, it's a lot of fun because you usually don't know exactly what you're going to get somebody said that about chocolates I don't know anyway all right I'm uh, gonna shut my camera off right here and uh, we'll let this soak in a little bit more this will continue to wick to the outside of the vessel and uh, by tomorrow this will be dry and I can put another color in there I'm not sure what I'm going to do at this point now I'm preparing to apply a little bit more color on this little hollow form pot that I started the other day so you take a little bit of stain and you apply that from the inside and that bleeds through so I'm analyzing this and I'm trying to decide what to do next I really don't like the light colored wood uh, which would just be the natural wood and I don't like to leave that without applying a little bit of color so what I ordinarily do to begin with is I apply two colors from the inside and so far I've got um, little purplish red and I've also got some turquoise I just took some blue and thinned that down a little bit with some white I'm not sure exactly I've got a couple ideas and what I'm going to do first with my airbrush compressor is I'm going to just do a little bit of experimentation with a little bit of color and compare that to what I've got right now this is my primary canvas I, I want to apply a little bit more color but I don't want that to compete I don't want that to be a bright yellow or something that's really going to show uh, and overwhelm what I've already got in there so I'm suiting up with some gloves and I'm going to set my pot aside right here I'm going to move in a little bit closer and I'm going to put some color on this piece of alder it's very light and I think that'll be just a good uh, test canvas for doing a little bit of coloring Okay, now here's my pot and I want to keep that close as a reference we'll set that aside and what I did the last time I was coloring I simply took whatever colors I had 
that I've been using, I had some yellow and red, and I also had some white and blue, and I simply mixed them all together. Now let me show you what that's going to give me. You might guess that what I'm going to get from that is, is a brown. Now what I really got from that is more of a kind of a greenish brown. Boy, I don't like that so far. So I'm going to just play around and I'm going to put a little bit of this in my airbrush and kind of practice as I go along. I've got these little cups and I use those for coloring when I'm doing a casting. So I'm going to just take my pipettes and before I mix up a real big batch I'm going to just take a little bit of uh, this mixture, put it in there. In fact, I think I might just put this in all three of these cups. And I think I have plenty of this to completely cover this little pot here. So I don't have to worry too much about experimenting with that. So I'm going to take I'm going to take some white and I really want this to be a little bit lighter than the colors I've got already on there. So I have a relatively clean pipette. In fact, nope, here's a brand new one. Okay, I want to use a brand new pipette. I don't want to contaminate what I have in this container this chestnut stain. I'm going to put just a little bit in here and put the rest back in the bottle. Just mix that up a little bit. And I think before I put any in my airbrush right here, I'm going to just uh, apply a little bit of this with an acid brush. These are brushes that plumbers use. Okay, I'm going to set these aside. I've been doing a little bit of uh, experimentation off camera. I'm really not sure what I'm going to get until I put this on a piece of wood. Alright, now that is quite a bit more red. So I'm going to go back and forth here, and I may not show you all of this because this is going to take me a little bit of time before I arrive at something I like. As you can see, I'm just uh, I'm making another layer right here. This is going to be a little bit more on the pinkish side. Well, I have to imagine what that's going to look like on my pot. And if I fill all that in with that faded red, what's it going to look like? And I'm just going to take a little bit of this blue chestnut. And the nice thing about this stuff is it is uh, completely mixed up. I'll just uh, pour this in here. And I'm going to take a little bit of uh, the white. I 
I buy these little acid brushes from Woodworker Supply and I get 50 or 100 at a time. And they're really nice for something like this. I'm not going to be painting uh, the Mona Lisa with something like this, but uh, I can kind of get an idea of what that is going to look like. Now, I actually want that a little darker. So I'm going to put a little bit more blue in there. Just a couple of drops. And all I've done here is I've mixed up blue and white. Kind of like that a little bit. I'm not committed yet. I can do whatever I want and I can change my mind as I'm doing this. And I didn't want to put this into my, my airbrush because I'm going to have to clean that out. So, I'll let you see my compressor just a little bit. I'll give you a close up of that. Uh, this is a Grex airbrush and compressor. This just hooks up to uh, your electricity. G-R-E-X. And my airbrush, I'll have to look up the, the model number of that airbrush, but it's a gravity feed. So to begin with, I'm getting air, and then as I pull that back, I'm getting fluid, I'm getting my color. So I'm gonna put this in my airbrush. And this is thinned with denatured alcohol. So I think what I'll do is I'll just turn this over. All right, just a little playing around there with my airbrush. It's a lot of fun. I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to put a little bit more of that in my, my airbrush. And I'm going to find a place and apply just a little bit of this mixture. I can always go over this and make it darker. And I think what I'll do is maybe, maybe find a place right down here. It won't be quite so conspicuous. Now one nice thing about an airbrush is you have absolute control and you don't have to put on a lot because you can always put on more later. If I need to I can sand that back if I want to. I can add a little bit of denatured alcohol. I have a little container here. And I can actually put this on the inside, let that wick through. If I have an area that's too dark, I can control it like that. So I'm going to just uh, find the place right there. Now here's a good example of what I'm aiming for. I've left this area right here, which is a little bit purple, I've left a nice crisp edge on that. It's a little darker right here, a little lighter in here. I can leave that and play around with that as I go. Let's fill in. Now as you can see as I apply this, I've got a dark area and it blends into a little bit lighter area. I like that. So I'm going to just go around a little bit more of that.
promise I'm going to stop talking in just a second, but this is uh, another nice area. Right in here, it's bled through from the inside. I've got these little burl eyes that have taken a lot more of the color right in here. And I've just kind of highlighted that surrounding area with a little bit of light blue. I like that. That's not too bad. So let me just do a little bit more of this. Now the farther away my gun is, that pattern opens up and I can cover more area. So I like to go off from space onto the piece and that way if I have any splatters it's going to happen down there like it just did. So. Well, so far I really like the colors. I like the contrast. There's some dark areas, some light areas. And I'm going to let this sit for a day or so before I make any more decisions. I could leave it right like this. Now, I am guilty, like many artists, of going too far. And I don't want to do that. I would keep going and going and I would just end up with a big black blob of color and it wouldn't wouldn't look like it does right now. I really like this so I'm going to shut my camera off, go do something else and come back to this. Well it's time to switch gears just a little bit. I'm ready to do a little bit of spraying in my spray room here and there's not much to see or I'd give you a little tour. I do have a fan in the wall that goes outside. So I'll turn that on and I may do just a little bit of spraying on camera. I'm going to try to do that. Maybe I'll wrap something around my camera so I don't mess it up. But anyway, I decided to stop right here. I decided not to go any farther like many artists and craftsmen do and mess it up. I like it a lot. So I'm going to put a coat of Mohawk Easy Vinyl Sealer on this. I'll give you a close-up of this can. I get this from Stuart McDonald, and it is in the series of lacquer products that you use. You use the vinyl sealer, then you use the Mohawk lacquer. And I'll show you a close-up of that. So anyway, let me uh, get this cleaned off a little bit. Let me get my respirator on. And I'll do a little bit of sanding. And what I have here, and I, I know you've seen this before if you've seen some of my other videos, this device is uh, used to just hold this in place. It's just a little bit of a, a, a rotisserie. It's like a lathe without a motor. And I can just turn this by hand and spray it. And I can reach about 98% of this. I got a little place in the bottom that I can't get to, but I'll, I'll fix that. So anyway, let me uh, load up my spray gun, get a respirator on, do a little bit of spraying.
I'll start, and then you can see if you like it. <laughs> oh, 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 man. What? God. What's wrong with it? I don't have one light set up. Isn't it bright enough? No. Oh. You want me to help you? <laughs> Where'd the big square one go? Takes me so long to do one of these things. Want me to help? <laughs> As I sit here. <laughs> okay. Ready? Do I have to say this is Sam and Cheryl? Can I just say good afternoon and um, say something about recapping what we've done so far? Okay. Good afternoon. So this afternoon, um, I came back out to visit with Sam and see how the piece was coming. Uh, we um, did a little coloring. We didn't. You did. He did a little coloring. <laughs> you held the pot, which was the di most difficult part of that. Go ahead. All right, I'll start over. Good. <laughs> Good afternoon. This is Sam and Cheryl. I stopped by the shop this afternoon to see how the coloring of this vessel was going. Um, earlier, we had, uh, I had been holding the pot while he did the coloring from inside. And most of this lighter blue was still white, I believe at that point. So, Sam, what have you done? <laughs> okay. Sound a little bit fakey, but let's, <laughs> we, we will proceed. Now, you, if you've been watching up to this point, you've seen me do a little bit of airbrushing and fill in that white wood that Cheryl was talking about. Okay, and I like this a lot, and sometimes that's all you have to go by is, you know, you get to a point where, okay, that, that's cool, I like that. Um, I have this rotating on one of my little turntables and there's a shot of the bottom. And I like the colors quite a bit. I have another piece out there that I did a video on a while ago. In fact, there was some airbrushing on that as well. And I also use that light blue kind of turquoise color in that. And I'm thinking that I may not use that combination for a while. Uh, I like it, but you know, I think you can overdo that. So what have I done since? And I don't know where you've been. You know, I've been out here working on this thing. So anyway. Um, I'm here now. Okay. Uh, I started out by doing a little bit of sealing on this and I did cover this right before I did my spraying. And right now I've got probably two or three coats of a sealer and probably five coats of lacquer. And I really haven't done a lot of sanding on this so far. What I will do from here is I'll put, uh, that's Coco playing with a rawhide bone. She thinks it's a ball and I don't know. Anyway, um, this really is not too bad. I, I may do just a little bit of sanding on that, put five more coats of lacquer on it I eventually want to uh, make this really shiny, uh, sand it to some fine grit, and then buff it a little bit. Uh, and, I, and I think that shininess will make that lacquer pop and the, and the colors pop a little bit more. So anyway, I'm gonna go back to work and do a little sanding, a little bit more spraying, and probably I'm very close to showing you the finished Piece. So uh, we'll go from there. Are you going to be around to help? I suppose. I think you need to call this piece the Caribbean. It reminds me of the Caribbean Sea. A lot of people say that this looks kind of like uh, the Earth or something like that, which, uh, yeah, you know, it's uh, oceans and I don't know. Come on, come on. No, you better not. 
Come around here. Come, come around. Come around over here. Hey, come up. Come up. Come up right here. Come on. You can come. All right. The whole family. Yeah. <laughs> we we used to have kids, but now we have a dog that's looking for her ride. Where's your Where's your ride? Nobody wants to see this. This This may be bonus footage at the end of the video, so at any time. Uh, turn it you, off. You can turn on Mike Walt or Carl <laughs> or somebody else. All right, cut. <laughs> Here we go. Oh, brother. All right. Well, that's not usable, but. I can make it work. All right. 